my loves and welcome to a new reading vlog. So I am going to be doing my fairy leaf vlog series that I do. I didn't do it last month purely because I never got round to the books. We were going to do two books um, but we decided to um, do the second book into list month purely because we we didn't have enough time to read both. I never even got round to the book we decided to read because I started a couple of chapters and I was like I'm not in the mood. Let's be honest I'm not in a fantasy mood. I'm hoping this book that I'm reading I'm going to enjoy because it sounds very fast-paced. Um, it's very different fantasy in my opinion so I'm kind of hoping that this will be okay for me because at the moment I'm just not in the mood I have not in that I just want easy reads at the moment I don't want anything that makes my brain work because I'm just not at that mental capacity to read something that makes me have to think and pay attention I'm not at that stage at the moment I've got a lot going on and yeah um so we were meant to read Daughter of the Moon Goddess last month I did start reading it and I felt it was extremely descriptive. Now I know with fantasy books and I know like books in series and like duology, du duologies, um, I know we do get quite a bit of world building. It's usually like the second book in a series or duology that um, you don't, it's more fast paced. But I felt that it was too descriptive. Like I remember a vivid description about this China teacup set with tea. And I was like, wow, like I don't think I need to know that. Like, you know, I don't un mind so much the world or, you know, the magic system or anything like that. But this was just, you know, we had like really massive descriptions of what people were wearing, what they looked like, all this food. Like, like you know, it wasn't even, it was descriptions. It wasn't like, you know, the smell of the food or anything like that. And I was just like, I'm not in the mood for this. And it just felt like those first few chapters I read was really slow. Lucy actually agreed with me. She said the first half was really slow. But what once you got halfway, things did pick up. And there was like, a, and there was like a big cliffhanger, and there was a big twist that she wasn't expecting. I'm not in that frame to do that at the moment, and I have since actually seen very mixed reviews. Some people love this book, and other people didn't love that book purely because they said it was too descriptive and wasn't necessary, and it made the book very slow and very less actiony. Um, so eventually, I'll read it, but it's it didn't happen in April, and I don't think I'm going to fit it in at any other months because. I'm not in the mood I personally think I'll read it in my own time when I'm ready to but for me and Lucy's already finished this book and she absolutely loved it she said it was brilliant from start to finish and she said it was up there alongside these hollow vows which is both a book that we both really really enjoyed and I think it's the only five star I've given so far in this series but we're going to be reading Only a Monster by Vanessa Len I think that's how you pronounce it I'm really excited for this book because the vibes I'm getting from it sounds very similar to a tv series that I love called October Faction now, October Faction is also graphic novels. I think the TV series was based from the graphic novels, which I didn't realise. I just thought it was a TV series. But no, there are graphic novels. I'd love to get some graphic novels of them. But I don't think my local library does. So it's going to have to be a second-hand jobby if I can find them. But this gives me October Faction vibes. Because in October Faction, we have this family. So the two parents were like supernatural um, slayers sort of thing. So any like bad monsters, demons, things like that, they would kill them. Um, and the siblings didn't know the children didn't know their parents did that and then they realized that they had their like some superpowers i think one was i think one could see the i can't remember now i think i'm sure one saw the future or something i don't know but they actually have um superpower like supernatural powers um and then they learned that their parents were like these monster slayers and yeah and this is what the vibe i'm getting with this book so if it's very similar in that sense like October Faction I know I'm gonna love this so I'm intrigued um just to read what the synopsis is to remind myself and also just in case you don't know what this book is about in every story there is a hero and a monster it should have been a perfect summer sent to stay with her late mother's eccentric family in London 16 year old Joan is, t is determined to enjoy herself she loves her nerdy job at the historic Holland house and when her super cute co-worker Nick asks her on a date it feels like everything is falling into place then a good Samaritan attempt gone wrong sends Joan spinning through time and her life quickly begins to unravel. Her family aren't just eccentric, they're monsters with terrifying hidden powers. And Nick isn't just a cute boy, he's a legendary monster slayer who will do anything to bring them down. As she battles Nick, Joan is forced to work with the beautiful and ruthless Aaron Oliver, heir to a monster family that hates her own. She'll have to embrace her own monstrousness if she's to save herself and her family, because in this story, she is not the hero. So like I said, it does give me October Faction vibes. Um, I feel like there's going to be a love triangle here, which I absolutely love. And yeah, I'm very intrigued to see what monsters they are and everything like that. So I do think this is going to be a good book. And if it is very quick pacing, then I'm here for it because I do love a quick paced fantasy. I don't know whether it's multiple POV. Like if that is, I would be even more happier. Um, 
so we, we it might be i don't know i'll let you know as i get into it whether um it's just joan's perspective or whether we get um other people's pov but i'm very excited for this book i think it's gonna be very good and i'm hoping that this will be a very quick easy read and it might start getting me back into um fantasy so i don't know how long this is going to take me i'm giving myself sort of like a week um but depending on how much i enjoy this book it might be done in a couple of days i don't have anything planned this week apart from today once i've done this i need to pop to the library to um give some books back but also pick some books up but other than that i haven't got anything planned um so i am gonna go to the library now and then once i come back i will start this it's not gonna take me long the library is about a 10 minute walk um so i'll be back by half them half 10 quarter to 11 sorry um so yeah i'm really excited to read this so I will get to this once I've come back from the library and I will catch up with you once I've read quite a bit to tell you what's going on, specific to say whether it is multiple POV or if it's just Jones. I don't mind either way, but I do like multiple POVs because sometimes it's quite nice to get different characters, aspects and all that. But yeah, I'm hoping this is going to be a good read, hoping it's going to be a quick read and I do hope it's going to make me at least start picking possibly YA fantasy up, um, but we'll see. Um, but Lucy said nothing but good things. She read this quite quickly, so I have a feeling if she really enjoyed it, then I am too. So yeah, with further ado, let's get straight into this vlog and I will catch up with you all later. <laughs> I said I'll be back by 11. I have done my library haul. So I went to pick up three books that are on hold and I ended up getting an extra four books. Um, so seven books in total and a lot of them were big chunky hardbacks. So we love that. Um, but let me, hold on, let me get out of the bag. So the books that I picked up that were on hold was another Amanda Lovelace poetry book, which is The Princess Saves Herself in this one. Um, I have got The Witch Doesn't Burn in this one. And I haven't read it quite yet. Um, I also picked up another Lang Leave um, book, Sad Girls, which I can't remember whether this... Yes, this is actually her fiction book. It's not a poetry thing. I think this book is actually a large print. Yeah, it looks like a large print book, but I don't mind. I don't care. It's nice, big, clear writing for me. But yeah, this is her fiction book and I'm quite keen because I love her poetry. So it'll be really interesting to see what her actual like fiction books are like. And then Nasty, which I'm so excited I got. Um, I was going to do a pre-order of this, um, but I changed my mind. And I was like, oh, I'll buy it. And then someone started reading it and I was like, oh, I'll just see if the library's got it. Because usually the most newest releases, they don't have straight away. It's usually like sometimes like a month after it's been released or anything. Um, but I thought after see, and it wasn't quite... Um, like in the libraries just yet but they're all in transit to come in so i managed to get family of liars by e lockhart which is the newest book by her that follows from we were library we were libraries we were liars which i absolutely adored i thought it was brilliant um but this is technically classed as a prequel this is about the parents rather as in we were liars it was the teenagers um i'm not sure if it's the oh yeah so it's the sinclair family um, so in We Were Liars, basically, I, I can't remember what happened family-wise, but I think there was like a little, um, like, so there was like a lot of these like really rich families, basically, who um, own this like island, like land, whatever. Um, I think there was like a big falling out. So some of the like families weren't talking. Um, the children all like sort of sneaked out to, um, or the teenagers all snuck out to hang out with one another and all that. And so one of the teenagers, like, she started um, dating someone. Long story cut short, to bring the family back together, they all decided to set a light at one of like the beach houses. And nothing nasty, just to get attention. Um, but it backfired because basically the fire went too much and one of the teenagers got caught and ended up dying. But we didn't realise. So throughout the actual story, we had this girl's perspective. And it was only until right at the end that we found out that this girl was actually dead. Um, but she didn't realise. She thought she was real. She didn't actually realise that she was a ghost. Um, so... It was a, such a brilliant ending. Like I did not expect it at all. And it was one of the best like Frida reads that I read in a while. Um, so I was really excited to see that there was a prequel. So this follows the Sinclair family. And I think it basically explains about these families and what went on and everything like that. And how like 
they come across this like land and this island. So I'm actually, I really want to read it now, I'm not going to lie, but I'm actually going to save this to read as a summer thriller for one of the prompts in whatever a um, because this technically is set um, on a private island off the coast of Massachusetts. Um, and basically it's set in the summer and also their island it is a beach. So it's definitely a summer thriller and I'm so excited to read this. It's going to be hard not to pick it up now because I've had really good things about this. Um, but I was really glad to see that my um, library, like it literally they were all going into transit and Cleveland was one of them. So I was so happy. And then the four books that I, like I just browsed because I thought, well, have a look. It was quiet. So I browsed and then I ended up finding four books. Um, three of them are actually on my Amazon wish list. So I was quite glad to see them there. The other one... I used to own, I'll talk about that one now actually, so I've got Normal People by Sally Rooney. Now I used to own this book and I unhauled it because I basically hadn't read it for like a good old year and also when I did try to read it I noticed that there wasn't very, um, like the people like had conversations, there weren't any speech marks and I was just like I don't like that, it just felt like there was no like like this person didn't like know their grammar, I know it sounds strange um, but I went to unhaul it and my mum always has a look at the books before like we give them charity and stuff like that and she picked this up and it wasn't for her but she said oh why are you um unhauling this um purely because like it was a really brand spanking new book and I was just like oh it's not like to me it hasn't really got any grammar in it. and I just it, it would annoy me and so she read the first like page and she was like oh to me it reads like a diary like instead of like you know when you have some diary entries they're like dear diary or whatever and it's all like italics and stuff like that um she said oh it's just to me it reads like a diary but without like it looking like a diary and um, I was like, like oh, should I keep it and give it a go and I was like oh no like I've had it for a year I just I haven't ever bothered so I thought no um but I've always been thinking about it ever since purely because it's a beloved book like loads of people go on about it I know Chloe from Chloe with the Chloe and the books oh, oh my god I can't remember that Chloe everyone knows who Chloe is um she talks so much about it. it's like one of her favorite books Caitlin from Kate Literature she loves this book um I know um Catriana has read this book and loves it. She also loves Conversations with Friends, which is a book I don't want to pick up purely because I've seen the TV series and I don't really like, I don't condone affairs really. I don't like reading about them that much either. Um, so I'm just like, I don't really want to do that one. So I thought, you know what, it's at the library. Let's give it a go. If I don't gel with it for whatever reason, then that's fine. It's a library book. Um, it hasn't cost me any money to get it. So we're going to give it a go. Um, I might do a vlog of this and like unless I really do DNF it but if I do vlog it and um, I'm hoping you know once I get used to it that I might actually enjoy it and get the hype so I might like vlog and see where I go if it's dear enough no one will see this vlog but if I do um actually read it then obviously you'll see the vlog so yeah we might gonna do that so I'm glad I got that and um, we'll see whether I like it or not then I got Ghost Wall by Sarah Moss someone recently was talking about this book I think it was um the book Leo possibly I think it was, I can't remember now. But they're recently talking about this and it sounded really intriguing and I also realised I had it on my wish list. Um, so I saw it, there was actually two copies. There was this one, which is a little mini hardback, or there was like a paperback one and I ended up getting this copy because it looked better. But I'm not 100% sure what it's about. From what I'm gleaming, it sounds like um, like a cult, that like someone got sacrificed and it's a story about that. Um, I might be wrong, but it sounds intriguing and it's only a short book and I felt that this would be quite a good book for um I think it's really a short book in one of the prompts for whatever fun I thought that would be um a good one and then I seen this in the library for a while but it was always on like the fast track um one so you just get it you don't have to check it out but you have to bring it back within a week and it's such a chunky book I was like there's no way I'm going to be able to read that in a week um but then it went off the shelf and I couldn't find it anywhere so I thought oh maybe like it's on hold or it, you know they moved it around or something but I actually found it and I'm glad it's this chunker, but it's Round Breaker by Victoria Aviard, who is the author of Red Queen. Now, <laughs> technically, Red Queen is on my TBR for this month, and I haven't picked it up. Um, I'm still not sure whether I want to pick it up, because it's got such a mixed, like, opinion on it. Um, so if I'm, I'm kind of like, ugh, I don't know whether I'm going to like it or not, but a lot of people really like this book. I've heard a lot about this book, a lot of people like it, and when I've, like, read the synopsis, it sounds more my jam now <laughs> here's me saying in my intro that i am not in a fantasy mood because i haven't read much fantasy and i picked up a chunky like it sounds like a bit like a military fantasy too um but we're going to ignore that again because you know i might get back into it but yeah i've got that it's a chunky book um but i think i might enjoy it, it sounds good and lastly um i didn't think they'd have it here um i have a thriller 
and it's by Catherine Ryan Howard, and it's Fifty Six Days, and basically it's set in a pandemic. Um, so it's to do with COVID nineteen. <laughs> so basically, fifty six days ago, Sierra and Oliver meet in the supermarket queue in Dublin and start dating the same week COVID nineteen reaches Irish shores. Thirty five days ago, when lockdown threatens to keep them apart, Oliver suggests they move in together. Sierra sees a unique opportunity for a relationship to flourish without the scrutiny of family and friends. Oliver sees a chance to hide who and what he really is. Today, detectives arrive at Oliver's apartment to discover a decompo- decomposing body inside. Can they determine what really happened, or has lockdown created an opportunity for someone to commit the perfect crime? So it's now that question of, was it, who is it, Sierra who's dead? Is it Oliver who's dead? Like, it's very vague, but I've seen, I, I saw the arc of this, and I really wanted an arc, but I never got one. Um... And I missed out on a tour spot for this as well, which was really, really, really annoying. Um, but loads of people read it. They said it was so fast paced and it was like so well done because it was very true to like COVID-19 with the pandemic, with long lockdown and all that. And yeah, I really wanted to read it, but I also was a little bit apprehensive because I'm for a while, I was an absolute anxious mess over COVID. Um, but <laughs> I've had COVID. And to be honest, I'm now sort of like, I don't even wear my mask that often anymore. I wear it in small shops um and i wear it in places where they actually still ask us to do it but i've stopped wearing it in supermarkets um and like um like the garden center i haven't worn it on anything and it's just purely like it's summer now it's well not summer spring but it's getting warmer and having a mask on and like not not many people wear them now you don't have to actually wear them and i was sort of like i was so worried about getting covid because obviously with what's wrong with me but when i got covid i was like do you know what it's it was not as bad as what i would get when i have a cold so I know it's like I'm not saying I'm being stupid because I'm not but I'm also a bit more like karma so I was just like I saw that 56 days because I literally saw it and I went why does that look familiar it didn't click and I went oh oh it's that book and I thought you know what I'm in the right frame of mind to read it now like I don't think it would bother me or get me a bit oh it's too close to home so yeah that's my little library haul yeah and I've been talking for the last 15 minutes so we're gonna go and make a iced coffee um I'm gonna video making my, making myself an iced coffee because I'm doing them homemade and I did my first ever one yesterday and it was chef's kiss so I'm gonna make one again and then I'm gonna settle down and read because I've got nothing else to do so come and join me in making an iced coffee and then we can get reading <music> you a book update because i've read quite a bit so i'm on chapter 8 page 101 and i'm just gonna say it this book is amazing i I can see why lucy read this very fast and honestly i don't think this is going to take me long to read because it's very hard to put down it is extremely fast paced it is very dark like this is a ya i'm assuming it's a ya most of fairy loot's books the box descriptions are ya so yeah, but it reads quite dark and I'm there thinking, oh, like, it doesn't bother me. I, I I like the dark books, but it's a bit like, literally, I think we were in the second or third chapter and I was like, oh my God, two families just got brutally killed, well, murdered, and there's just two people left. I'm like, oh. um, it's amazing. Absolutely amazing. So I don't think it's multiple POV at the moment. It's just Joan's um, recollection, recollection. Recole- oh my god recollection um which is fine um you know i do like multiple povs but it's not the fact like you know i just do like i like to have multiple ones because it's quite nice to have people's um 
like accounts to it but obviously these two characters that are together that are together so it's really stupid having um the same story happening twice um but wow is all i can say wow wow so basically we're following joan and she is 16 years old she is half english half chinese and we've just found out that she's also half human, half monster. So her mother and all of her mother's family are all monsters, but her dad and his family are all humans. So from what I've gathered, I don't think her father had any clue on... Um, I'm popular because, you know, um, I don't think Joan's father and that knew about her mother, about her family and all that. So Joan's mum died at as when... Um, Joan was a baby, um, so she doesn't know anything about her mum, but obviously she goes to visit her mum's gran and she's got her cousins and aunts, so, you know, she's very much um, still part of her mum's family. Um, basically, she's she's been told so many times that her family are monsters. She doesn't believe them. She just thinks her family are very eccentric and a little bit weird and just believe on, like, random things. Um, she has seen some peculiar things, like her family's have sort of... Um, made things disappear she's made something disappear and all of that but again she's been very young she's like doesn't believe in anything basically she goes on her very first date with nick who she um volunteers with at holland house this is holland house hang on have i said that right there with yeah holland house um so she gets all ready to go to this like breakfast date with nick um, they both volunteer at this Holland House, which is like a museum and everything. Um, so she gets there quite early. He's um, on his way. He's early too. So she's gone to this coffee house. Um, and basically, um, this old man keeps coming in. He's really drunk, but he's also got dementia. He's very confused. So she decides to help him. And long story cut short, basically, um, he started sort of hurting her. Not, I don't think he meant it nastily, but he started hurting her. And she lost her balance and she was going to really hurt herself. And so she managed to gain her balance, but she caught him in his neck. And then next thing she knows, she's like on the floor, everything's black. And she comes to and she has lost 13 hours of her memory. And she's completely confused on how. She then realises that actually she hasn't lost her memory. She has gone from like day to night. So she um, obviously misses out on her date um, and she's like, what the hell has gone home, she's gone wrong? So she goes home because she's staying at a grand's and like summer holidays, she stays at a grand's every year while her dad's gone to um, Malaysia to see his family and all that. Long story cut short, her grand tells her that she is a monster and that when you touch humans behind a neck, you can um, gain time from them and you can move in time move back in time whichever way however whatever you take from them time wise so say you've taken three days worth of time they would die three days earlier and she was like no 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 and then like she lands things started making sense like with her um like her cousins and her aunts like one minute they're like they're next like, you know it starts making sense and she's like what the hell like basically she's like she did like she's taken like However, like, I think she's taken, I can't remember how long she took of this man. And she's like, you know, I made him die early and all that. And so she's like having a full on panic mood. She ends up not being able to sleep. She finally sleeps from like, I think half past seven. And she wakes up at half past three in the afternoon. Um, she talks to Ruth and she says, like, she says to Ruth, why didn't you tell me? And um, she said, we did, but you, you, would, you thought we were joking. Like, what are we meant to do? Um, anyway, so she goes to Holland House and she sees Nick and she sort of wants to apologise because she's missed her volunteering thing as well. But she's also very much like, I can't be with you because if I touch you by accident, you know, I'm going to thing. Anyway, they start talking, um, they kiss and then all of a sudden these people just appear at Holland House and they're like, what the hell? Like no one comes after hours and all of that. Like it's like a private property and all that. And they were also like these people just like randomly appeared through thin air and um joan re recognizes who they are they're like oh this is this i've seen them before and sh so they're the um oliver family um basically they're like sort of royalty in some sense but they're another monster clan and both the olivers and hunts are like oh like do not like each other they fight each other and blah 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 so they all turn up and they find um joan and nick so at first they thought they were both humans specific like obviously nick is but then um 
the like leader realizes that Joan is um half human, half monster, and that she's just um done um done like a time travel sort of thing. Anyway, I, I don't really know why. So the Oliver clan are definitely monsters. They're very cruel. They're not nice at all. Um, specifically, um, Lucian and Edmund. They're like you know everyone is so scared of them that they do what they want. So anyway, they go and basically we're going to kill Joan and take Nick as a hostage so they can um, bleed him to death with like time and take like you know slowly make him die and all that so Joan tries to protect like went, goes to protect Nick and then she gets hurt um and then she was, then it just roll, rolls reversed Nick all of a sudden then started fighting turns out that Nick which we obviously knew in the synopsis but Nick is a monster hunter him and his fam well his family were brutally killed um by monsters and so he's sworn himself to be a monster hunter so he's called his team to come and take out the Olivers and he's found out that obviously Joan's a monster so her family are monsters so he's going to take them out as well and he said you stay here and I can put you in a safe house I can protect you because like you know you saved me um it's the first time you've taken time from a human it was an accident you didn't know but like if you ever do it again I will kill you she's obviously pleading to him saying no you cannot kill my family like my family it's my family and he didn't care so she managed to flee um she did some killing she managed to flee back home and literally she's the whole of her family apart from her gran who is like near death's door and ruth who's one of her like is like her eldest cousin they're there um basically your gran tries um wants ruth to do something and so she was like um so joan was there like trying to stop her from bleeding out but obviously not working and joan's gran tells her you're not just half monster you have a special power that no one knows um it no one else has so like obviously it's very clear that she's quite special she's very powerful and only she can kill the hero which is nick um and joan's gran gives her a necklace so she's got a bracelet which has got a symbol on now which shows that she's from the hunt clan blah 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 which is why they knew she was why the olivers knew she was um like a monster well, obviously they realize that she's half human as well anyway um and then she's, she's got this necklace so obviously this has got something to do with something um so she ends up um escaping her house her grand dies and her roof ends up um getting killed too for joan to escape and so she runs and runs and runs and then she finds arthur who's just about to get killed so she just she was like enough i'm not having any more die regardless if he's an enemy and left her to die at the start so she attacks a person and then, and then he they both like i don't know whether he just gets knocked out or whether he's dead i can't remember long story cut short arthur and um joan are now teaming up to sort of try and do something because obviously there's like this thing where if you have like a debt with another monster like you have to make yeah basically it's very similar to lots of fantasies um if you owe someone a debt like you know you're with there's like some like sort of like bond there until the debt's owed blah blah, blah. so they're sort of working together um they've now just realized that they are the only two people in their families that are alive um joan's now like realizing shit i am half monster i don't know what to do and i am now being dragged in the sense that i have to use these monster powers that i i don't know like she doesn't know how to time travel and all of that and things like that so arthur bless his heart is like teaching her um so they've just gone to buckingham palace and they're being tourists cause arthur's told her that you don't take it just from one person because um both the human authorities and the monster authorities would don't won't like it so you literally take a little bit from like so many different people and it accumulates to think so basically they are trying to go back 20 years later to change what's going on um arthur is very confused of why this is all happening because apparently the oliver clan had like this book and it tells you when you're going to die and all of that um and obviously the whole of his family's just got completely brutally murdered and it, nothing was said um so they're like obviously wanting to go back 20 years later because they can't but go back in time to where they were like where they are it has yeah i don't understand that part um but the um monster hunters they just found them so they literally just like like going time traveling to somewhere else so they can get out of the situation so i'm not 100 percent sure whether um the plan is to go back 20 years later to change what's just happened or what i don't know um but yeah but the banter in this book is absolutely amazing arthur 
he is just so funny and I love like the dynamic between Joan and Arthur like they both don't like each other but they both like will snap at each other and they can't help doing it it's it's sort of one of those things like you could like I kind of feel like they're going to be enemies to lovers like whether this has a romance plot in it or not I don't know but I've just sort of gone Ooh, I like this like I can't stand Nick at all like when I when I um like obviously when you find out it says in the synopsis that Nick is a monster slayer so I was like okay he's gonna be the enemy but I was like like does he actually have feelings for Joan and maybe he doesn't want to hurt her which but no he's pretty much said if you leave the safe house and you use your um you take time from a human, I will kill you. Like, he didn't even bat an eye. And she was like, and the fact that he just brutally murdered her family, I'm pretty much like, mm, yeah. It's just so good. It's so fast paced and it's brutal. Like, I'm not kidding you. Some of the descriptions of, like, how these families got killed, I was like, what? Um, uh, uh, there's this quote like, I had to think. So, obviously, with um Joan she's half human half monster half Chinese half English so she's like you know she's a mixed bag I don't think she ever really knows what her identity is and it was like it all felt the same sometimes Joan was more than a stranger but less than a true insider she stood on a threshold neither outside nor in um and then later on down the line Aaron calls her well baby monster and I'm just like brilliant I love this um and then we have um, I don't know why I put this one down. Why did I put this down? Oh, yeah. Um, there was another quote here. It was like, um, in movies, heroes killed monsters all the time. When a, car when a camera moved from the monster's bodies, you never had to think about them again. But when you were the monster, when the monsters killed the, when the monsters killed were the people you loved, dot, dot, dot. And I just thought, oh, yeah, it's really, like, it makes you think because, like, you're so much believing that monsters are baddies and all that, but you're meeting Joan and her family and they haven't done anything nasty. Like, the Oliver family, to be fair, are monsters. They're very cruel and nasty. Not so much, I don't think Arthur so much, but, like, the um, Lucian and Edmund, they were certainly not nice. Um, I, I, can, I would say they were monsters, but Joan and her family, like the Hunt family, I wouldn't say were they were monsters yeah but they weren't the nasty kind in my opinion and to me the monster slayer is like nick he in my opinion is a monster and nasty so it's really interesting to say you know like it makes it's not that sort of like line of what's right and what's wrong and um i really love that i'm so enjoying this book it is just it's brilliant and i don't think it's going to take me long to read i genuinely think this is going to be a book that i can read like to be fair if i could i'd probably read it to, in like a whole day of today but i do have um like, I need to pick Alice up from school soon. Um, and I'm Silent Witness is back on um, BBC One. So I'll be watching that tonight because I absolutely love it. It's one of my favourite TV series. Um, so I will probably read until like nine o'clock and then watch it. And then I might have an early night. Um, so like as much as I'd love to read it in one sitting, I could. I won't. Um, but in all fairness, I kind of have a feeling that whatever I get up to today... I will probably finish it tomorrow um, because it's so easy to read. It is so fast paced. I can't put it down and I'm just already invested and I'm already 101 pages in. Um, so yeah, I'm having a blast. I am having an absolute blast with this book and I'm really glad because it really has got me back into, like, I suppose this isn't to me a fantasy book in a sense of like magic and all that. To me, this is like more of like a supernatural paranormal book. It's certainly an urban fantasy book, in my opinion, because we're in like present day. Like, we're, we, you know, we're not in a different world or anything. We're in like, well, we're in the UK because we're in London. So, um, you know, it's like, it, and I, I, I quite like urban fantasy. Like, I didn't know what an urban fantasy was until I read what it was about. And I was like, oh, and I have read quite a few urban fantasies and just never noticed. Um, so I quite like the fact that, like, we are in normal times for all this is going on. Um, so I wouldn't say this is fully fantasy in the sense that we've got, like, fey, magical elements and stuff like that. It is more of a, you know, we've got monsters, which I would say are more supernatural paranormal beings. And, yeah, I'm really enjoying this. Like, I... 
I think I'll even love it even more if we do have a little romance section as well like, like that would be quite nice but I, it has to be done in a good way not a stupid way um but yeah I am already loving this and if it continues on like this then this is going to definitely be a five star um but yeah I'm going to read a little bit more um and then I have to go and get Alice from school so hopefully I can read a bit once like when she's home because she'll just play and that I can read while she plays but we'll see um but I don't really want to not read it because it's so good but I will probably catch you up if I reach halfway, I'll give you another update. If not, I will catch up with you tomorrow and I'll let you know my plans. But I honestly feel like tomorrow I will probably finish this book at some point. Um, because it's too good to not devour it. Um, but yeah, I will, will catch you up later. If I do reach the halfway, up, like halfway point sometime today, I'll update you then. If not, I'll update you in the morning and go from there. Um, but yeah, I'm gonna... Woo! I lost my phone then. Um, yeah, I'm going to go and do a little bit more reading before I go and get um, Bella from school. So I'll catch you later. Okay, this is going to be a spoiler. This vlog is going to be a spoiler vlog. But Ruth isn't dead. She's fucking alive. She didn't die. She's time travelled and she's been looking for Joan for the past two years. <gasps> Whoa, is all I can say. <laughs> wow. Wow, wow, wow. I'm going to have to stop though. I'm on page 132, chapter 10, but I'm going to have to stop because I need to go and get my daughter from school. I don't want to because this book is so good. Sometimes having mummy duties is not fun. <laughs> wow. This book is just... If you haven't read it, you need to. I've also just found out that this is going to be a planned trilogy. So clearly this is going to end in a cliffhanger, isn't it? No, we can't end things in cliffhangers, especially when books two and three aren't even out. No, I don't, I don't like that. I don't like waiting. If it ends in a cliffhanger, I'm going to be so pissed. I'm on chapter 22, page... Oh god, I've forgotten now. Where am I? Page 321. I need to pick Alice up from school in like five minutes. Shit's going down. I am this close to crying. I don't like this. <laughs> I think we've just found what... I think I've worked out what um, Joan's power is. Aaron's in love with her and he knows that she's going to change the timeline and she's not ever allowed to see Aaron because Aaron knows who he truly who Jones truly is and I'm not ready for this because I really like Aaron and I'm like no they should be together and I'm gonna cry so we're gonna stop but I am like this much from the end so I'm gonna pick my daughter up now she's got rainbows so once I drop her off at rainbows I've got till half past six because they're doing a jubilee party today um so I'll finish it and I'll tell you my thoughts but shit is going down and this is the best book ever it's five stars and if you haven't read it you need to bloody read it because it's amazing but yeah i will catch up with you and oh my god my hair looks awful today sorry rude i'll catch up with you later and give you my final thoughts and everything because wow just 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 wow <laughs> oh my god <laughs> i don't know how i feel about that Oh, oh, I don't know how I feel about that. <laughs> 344 and 345, if you've read this book, you know what I mean. And just like that, the book is finished. And guys, chef's kiss. This was brilliant. Probably one of the best YA fantasy books I've read in the last couple of months. I've just, it's really got me into wanting to pick up another YA fantasy. Maybe not an adult fantasy per se. But I've now got into that bit of, oh, I want to pick up fantasy. And the last couple of months, I've not really been in the mood to do that. So that's nice. Now, before I get into, like, the end of this vlog and just, like, give you my final thoughts, I thought I would update you from when I last did a proper book update of what was going on. Now, from here on out, this is going to be spoilery. So if you haven't read this book, 
and you're going to don't watch <laughs> this um if it's up to you whether you do or not but from here on out i'm going to be talking about spoilery things because yeah <laughs> um so this is your warning three two one here we go so i last updated you and i said that we just found out that joan had this necklace that was a key to the monster court and Basically, she didn't understand why this key to this monster court was important. Um, it was very clear that a few people recognised this necklace um, and wanted it, but she didn't understand why. Um, they sort of, so her, Ruth and Aaron sort of found out there, there was some like little myths about what the monster court did. That apparently monster court changed the monster time, um, changed like the timeline that there was actually a previous timeline beforehand, but the king changed it, but like it's all myth. And basically, Joan is so stricken with grief and hurt and everything, basically it's like she wants to find whatever this can use to change the timeline, to change the timeline again to bring back everyone's families that have obviously got murdered by Nick and the monster hunt, like the monster slayers. Um, so Joan ends up looking for a gran and she finds her gran, who's I think she's about 25, where they were. So they were in 1993, which I absolutely love because obviously I was three years old at that like sense but I do remember like the 90s when you look back to like old pictures and all that um so that's quite nice but she sees her gran who's 25 years old back then and she basically tells her you know I'm your granddaughter and blah 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 and so she basically asks her gran about this necklace and then she ends up asking about this power because obviously her gran told her that she's got this power that doesn't belong to the hunts and she wants to know what it is and her gran Len obviously wasn't overly a nice person I went to basically signaled um, the bartender that was there to get someone so obviously um, Joan ran away um, but in that chat with um, her gran it turns out that there was like a tr transmedio there was like a transmitter sort of thing that apparently the king had that could change the timeline which is what was in the monster court so her Aaron Ruth um, decide that they know go they need to go into the monster court but they didn't know how but she then realized that one of the uh, market stallers really was interested in um, Joan's necklace and she did a swap with him with a mobile phone like her mobile phone for money but she wouldn't give her necklace so she ended up trying to find him and it turns out he was he's called Tom he's Tom Hathaway and that he used to be one of the guards at the court um and so basically he said that that was like the only sort of like key he could have but he could get them in and so they all had this plan and basically he would get them all in and she would give him what he needed um so as we get on it turns out that basically Tom was married to um, another monster family called Jamie Lou and he had been um, captured for like years and like times and all that and basically he yeah um, I, I don't really know what happened in, whether Jamie Lou in this timeline was dead or what I'm not fully 100% sure but um, I think that was what he was coming for um, but basically all this stuff happened Joan managed to do something and it turned out to be this power that like, had been locked inside her and then it all came out. Um, so she, she didn't really pay attention to it when it happened. But as we go into the story, she sort of was like, she knew, she kind of knew it's always been there. And then she started realizing things. So basically, Joan, so the monsters have more than one family. And usually when they're um, 12 years old, they go through this process and it sort of tells you, they look into like which powers you've got to which family you reside. So for Aaron, um, Aaron he started at nine because they noted things but basically Aaron managed like obviously was like yes you're part of the Oliver clan but he also had a very rare power that the Olivers have um, but not many have them where they not can actually determine if um, a human is a monster they also can tell which monster family actually belongs to um, and so he when he first saw Joan which is the reason why he got quite funny was he realized that Joan had this very unique power and basically a lot of people wouldn't want her alive for this um which is why he was sort of like very much like, Ugh, but then i think he also starts to have feelings with her as well anyway um but apparently if joan was told that she was half human half monster and joan went through that i think we would have seen that joan would have been with a particular family i don't know which family it is or whether it's like a completely different family that no one ever knows about but it's clear that yes she's got the hunt power and in that sense and but like she's also half human like it was very intriguing um we i we don't know the full extent of joan's power and i'm curious to know whether that's gonna extend like there has been rumors that this is going to be a trilogy um 
I have seen on Goodreads that there is book two and book three and it says untitled so I'm guessing there probably is but for now because this book was only released this year maybe the author is waiting to see how good this book went or something I'm not 100% sure but there's rumours to say there's going to be a trilogy so in that sense I'm wondering whether Jones Powers will possibly get more talked about in the books going forward I hope so um but something happens she does something they find basically this sort of like transmission thing which is to do with Jamie Lou who obviously we then find out was married to Tom and he basically um shows what happened to him and so basically he has been tortured and tortured through different timelines I mean loads of timelines so basically um this blonde woman who we sort of know is part of the monster court but she's not like the king or queen or anything I don't we don't know who she is but basically she captured Jane Lou and she had got Nick who was a human but for years and years and years she trained him into being this monster slayer so in every year like when he didn't um succeed she would start it all back up again and then finally one day I think it was in the 1900s that he finally didn't that you know he did not care that he like possibly killed this monster I'm not 100% sure you didn't see it but it was very clear that um Nick was wasn't born to be a monster say he'd been made into it but what this blonde woman didn't know was in every single timeline while he was going through this he also kept falling in love with a monster girl which is Joan so in this book as you read it Joan and Nick have got this sort of thing like they know where each other are they sort of already know each other like they, it's just like a something clicked and it turns out that it's very much that in all of these different timelines that's happened Joan has always been there it's sort of in some sense you know when you have star-crossed lovers and forbidden romance and you have a thing that they're like you're always drawn together the universe sort of tries to bring you together but you can never be together for whatever reasons it was that so basically um we find that out and Joan obviously realizes by this point what her power is what she can do because what they the woman this blonde woman didn't know was Nick's Achilles heel is Joan and Joan got told by her gran that she's the only person who can get rid of the hero and it's clear that she can because his kid Achilles heel is of her so she ends up finding all this out she ends up realizing what she has to do so she goes back in time and she sees Nick again and um Nick ends up like capturing her and he gives her this truth serum and basically she tells him this truth and this truth is I know what happened to you I saw you in so many timelines being made into who you are now you know you watch in every single timeline your family getting murdered because this woman did it she said you know you weren't born like this or all of that you were made into this these people made you into a monster in hindsight purely because of whatever their agenda like you know if that didn't happen he wouldn't have done what he did it, it made a lot of sense and she also realized what she needed to do what she needed to do is use this power that she's got because this power which leads me to the ending is she can unmake things so in other words because I did wonder whether she had something to do with time whether she could actually time travel without needing to um touch people humans next and taking a little bit of time from their life sort of thing so I wondered if it was that and in some sense yes she can change the timeline per se because she can unmake things and so she gets captured by um Nick and like she says all this truth he doesn't believe her while she's talking to him she unpicks all of these locks to get free and he was just like you've got no new no like they were all of the humans are behind his things you've got no way to get us because you need a human to take some time off she goes you're forgetting one thing I'm not just a monster I'm half human and so she touched her necks and so she takes time off her and like obviously she probably shouldn't have done it because a it takes time off her life and b it hurt the living shit out of her as well by the sounds of it but it worked and she managed to go back um I think she sort of may have jumped forward in time I don't know how long she took it didn't say but she ends up going back to this Holland house which is obviously it constantly brings her back there because of Nick Nick's there he's grown up a little bit more um and he also looks really scruffy and really haunted and long story cut short on this basically he goes I believe you you know after seeing what happened after what she's like what Joan said he realized that yes they've been in different timelines that they've always been drawn together he said like he went the first day I met you like in there actual timeline they, like they first met he said I knew what your voice sounded like before you even talked I knew what your tea you like how you liked your tea before I ever even saw you do your tea and stuff like that so he sort of realized that there was truth to it and at the same time she also knew what she had to do so basically like he told her he loved her he told her that he knows that she'll never forgive him for what he did with her family but at the same time he sort of wants them to be peace like peace between 
monsters and humans and all of that and he goes like we don't have to be the people we were made and Joan said um like said a piece and so they kiss and so this timeline that's sort of been broken has like sort of been all re stitched together but at the same time while she was kissing and hugging Nick she used her power and she unmade him so in a, she unmade him so she took all his life away she killed him and she unmade everything so all of the families are alive um there's no hero so this Jamie Lou never got um captures and tortures and everything like that but it leaves that question of what else did she change and did she change it for the good so like the Lou family basically their power is they can remember they can remember all of the time shifts and everything like that and so this Jamie Lou's um ended up finding um Joan um later down the line and like she, they were talking and he goes I remember and he goes I don't remember everything but I remember so he remembers the torture he remembers the hero he remembers certain, um the woman who did it but he he can't remember certain things that he can't remember um leaving Tom this message of um, who the hero is and why he's the way he is and the whole bit of this like forbidden love sort of thing but at the same time so these two are the only two people know so Ruth and her family don't know what happened Aaron will no longer remember her and she can't even find Aaron because Aaron's got this power to know not only that like because a monster all the monsters look like humans so he can look at a human and know that they're a monster um, but he also can find what monster family they're in and like their power and stuff like that and um basically he's told Joan if you change everything and all of that you know you can't see me because the minute I look at your in your eyes I know who you are and you know he could basically either, either he won't kill her but she could get harmed to the point because they don't want her to be alive so like it's that bit because obviously there's, we've got this forbidden love like it's very clear that um Nick and jo Joan were meant to be together but obviously in hindsight the Nick can remember Joan as the good Joan before she like knew she was a monster and everything like that but Joan is no longer like that like she knows she's a monster she can remember everything that Nick did to her family and all of the other monster families and that's she's never gonna forgive that and also at the same time she knows she's got this time travel family and being so much interested in history and all that she knows that she'll want to use it and also she's got this power that like she doesn't understand and she knows she's not the same Joan anymore um so like obviously that this like you know Nick's no longer here so it's one of those books where I'm like, oh, like it, it ends in a way where, in hindsight, if there's no more book, it it's ended in a way that there's no like humongous cliffhanger. But it is ended in a way that where you're like, right, I want to know more about um, Joan's um, sorry, Joan's power. I want to know whether she, like her and Aaron ever do get together, like whether there is good and Aaron that we did see in the book. But also, there's just all these bits of thinking like she changed this for all these families to be alive. But what else has she changed? Like, has she actually done the sense that, yes, there's no more Nick, but this woman who obviously caused Nick to be a monster slayer, she's still out there. Who says that she doesn't remember what she did and how she has to do it, and she just chooses someone else? Like, who says that doesn't happen? So it sort of opens up in a sense that there can be other books to explore possibly what Joan did, like whether she changed things and it's even worse than what it was before sort of thing. Um, but this was just so fast-paced. The characters... Even though it's just Joan's perspective, the characters itself is just so brilliant. You can't help rooting for them. Um, it is really fast paced. It's very hard to put down. And I love the time travel. I had seen reviews and people said that the time traveling, it felt a bit over the over the top of like, where are we now sort of thing. But for me, no, I really enjoyed it. I thought it was a really good aspect of the book. And it was very interesting. I don't have any criticisms for this book, but I will say in regards to like, these monsters they're not very monstrous like these monsters look like humans they can pretty much be killed very easily the only monstrous thing they can do basically is they can time travel but into doing so they have to take time from a human which in other words if you take a day off a human's time they die a day earlier but it's also that sort of thing as none of these humans know when they're going to die so you know and they can't feel any pain they, they don't know if they're going to die like if someone touches their neck and they do it for so long and they could possibly kill that person then and there but a lot of these monsters don't do it because there's like monster um laws in place where they can't do that like the human laws have this thing in place too even though they don't know there's monsters they sort of are aware that there's like a sudden drop of people like dying they'd be like why sort of thing and they'll look into it and obviously the same with the monster police force sort of thing um so in a sense of like these monsters, they're not overly monstrous. They're not like your typical monsters we get where we've got your demons, your vampires who are immortal, can't get hurt. And they're quite, you know, they are quite nasty, depending like if they're good or bad. It's, to me, these monsters, you know, they're they're not good in the sense of, you know, they have they will use humans time to time travel. Because in hindsight, like, do they need to time travel? Like, no. But obviously, 
their monster side of them wants to. They obviously have other little like family clan powers. For example, with the Hunt family, which is what Jones family is, they are very good at thieves and hiding themselves and stuff like that, and they can hide like objects and stuff. Um, all of the family, um, like have like a hidden rare power, and also like they also sort of like a bit superior. I think they were with the court pocket and stuff like that. But their their family is a bit more very monstrous in the sense that they, they don't care about who they kill sort of thing. Then we've got like the Lou family who can remember all the different timelines. Um, we've got another family who um, can get the truth out of you. You've got another family, their like special power is that they can stop you from time traveling for a bit, they mark you. So they have all like family clan powers on top of that. But to me, they're not your typical monsters. And in that sense, you're like, well, actually, are they really bad? And are they worth being slayed? In Like when you look at it in that sense, no. You know, and I wouldn't say that they're monsters either, in my opinion. But I don't care. My other criticism, sort of, it doesn't bother me either. But I kind of wonder whether if we had more um, character perspectives, like if we had a multiple POV in this book, preferably I would have said Joan's point of view, Nick's point of view, and Aaron's point of view. I think the book might have elevated even more because I think Jane's point of view would have been really good in the sense of what's going on in the here and there with her. Nick's point of view would be interesting to know like why he's doing what he's doing, what he believes and all of that. And then for Aaron's point of view, it'd be nice to know why he felt like why like all of the clan and the hunt are very like big enemies to one another, but why he actually wanted to help Joan. It would have been interesting to see all of those aspects and like in that, but not have it so the books repeated by each character's events either. Like you don't want that either. But at the same time, I understand if we if you did that, we would have known about Nick and how probably Nick was brought up that we wouldn't have like the, the like plot of this book. It would be a different plot, so I kind of can understand why we did. Like regardless of those two facts, like it's fast paced, it's an enjoyable read. You can't help rooting for the characters. Even Nick, like once I got to know really what went on with Nick, I felt really bad for him and like he did want to actually help right at the end, but Joan knew it wasn't going to happen. Like she wouldn't like she very much was i want my family back and whether that is the right thing to do or not um whatever um the characters are really good like you know the fact that at the end i did actually feel for nick like obviously there's a little touch base in romance but we haven't really got much which i quite like because i don't mind fantasy romances but if you're very heavily with a plot and then you bring a romance on top it's like it's not i don't feel like it's necessary so i quite like that there was room for it and I also think there's room for it to grow because I'm wondering whether the next books, whether like, you know, I, I do not know if this does be a trilogy. I don't know how this trilogy is going to go because how this book was ended is in a way where it's like done, sorted, everything's back to normal. But it's also opened that possibility of she might have done that, but has she changed something and made it 10 times worse? So it opens up with, would the, is that what the books sort of go into? Like, does she meet Aaron and Aaron remembers stuff or anything like that? It, yeah. Like, I, I'm certainly very intrigued with Joan and her power. I want to know, like, who her true family is. I'm wondering whether there's more to her father than meets the eye. Like, her father supposedly is human. But it is, you know, like, he seems to go travelling a lot. She seems to always go to her grands over the summer. And it's like, is there, in fact, something in his family that we don't know? And he hasn't told Joan because he doesn't think Joan is a monster or something. I don't know. So it does open up little things of, oh, do we have this and that? But this isn't five star. I absolutely loved it. It's on par with these hollow vowels. Um, and like obviously by the end of the year I do want to like um, sort of go from like what's my lowest to my top pick and at the moment I'm so stuck between these holy vows and only a monster because in regards to the enjoyment and how quickly I read the books these two books did that um, but I, I don't know part of me feels like only a monster just because of the plot and how different it is to any book you read that kind of trumps it a bit more than he, these holy vows because these holy vows did have an element of a court of thorns and roses in my opinion um, like it didn't bother me, like it wasn't saying me but you could see the similarities. Um, so yeah, it's now put the Fairy Loot series into a, ooh, you know, we have two books that are on top. What happens if I keep reading and there's some on top? So yeah, a really, really good read. This only took me, you know, technically two days, probably just over 24 hours if you really go by how long I've been reading. But absolutely love it. If you've not read it, please do. Um, if you have read it, let me know your thoughts and what you thought of the book. Like, it's quite interesting to see other people's reviews. Some people really enjoyed it, other people didn't like it. So, and I, I hate reading books with, when people don't like, like, I hate reading when you love a book and then you read the reviews where people don't like it, I don't like it. But at the same time, when I read them just before I did this, I was just like, it makes sense and why some people said what they said. Um, but yeah, 
So that means that this vlog is now over. Um, also, while we were doing this, I completely forgot that yesterday was the mark of Cassidy's Patreon readathon that she was doing. It's from the 23rd to the 30th of May. And it's just a, a little free book prompt thing, but, it's, um, but I realised right, um, yesterday evening, I thought, oh, and so I was like, right, I know I did the TBR, but I'm going to change it. So I ended up fitting this book into like the main colour prompt book um, like of this egg thing. Long story cut short. Um, so I'm going to end this vlog, but I'm going to start a new vlog because I'm obviously going to be vlogging the other remaining books for Cassie's thing. But just know that I have already read the first book in the prompt for this one because I made it work. Um, I will talk a bit about this book in my new vlog after this anyway. Um, but yeah, I'm quite glad that I was able to fit this book into Cassidy's readathon prompt because it made it a little bit easier for me because I did want to do it since I'm part of her Patreon. But yeah, thank you for watching this vlog and I will see you in the next one, which won't be long. So I'll catch up with you all then. Bye!